Hey, Dinosaur George again, answering all of your online questions. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and send me an email. Okay, let's get started. Alex from Richmond, Virginia. Um, Alex wants to know, did theropods have lips? Uh, I've looked at their skulls and they have those holes right above the mouth that look a lot uh, like uh, they had lips. Well, that's a great question. Uh, let's check out this guy. This is a Deinonychus skull. Uh, Deinonychus definitely has those little holes you're talking about. Let me turn him this way and check him out here. Uh, Deinonychus definitely has those little holes you're talking about. If you look closely, these little holes right here are what uh, he was referring to. Those certainly suggest that um, this dinosaur had lips. Now, they were not the kind of lips that we think of. I don't think they could have puckered up and given you a kiss. Uh, certainly, they could have puckered up and given you a bite, but uh, that's a different thing. <laughs> but what I think they had the ability to do, in my opinion, is they had the ability to at least pull their lips up and bare their teeth. Let me explain why I think that. In the animal kingdom, there is one universal signal for all animals and that is when you show your teeth, that is a sign of aggression. Now, in humans, we smile. That's something different. We're showing our teeth, but we also change our facial expressions to kind of tell the person you're looking at, I'm not growling at you, I'm smiling at you. When we smile, we squint our eyes a little bit, but when we're mad and we grit our teeth, there's nothing smiley about our face. We're sending a very clear signal that we don't want you around. All animals do it. They show their teeth as a way to convey to you they don't want you around. Well, I think dinosaurs may have had that same ability. The predators probably. Um, if you are confronted by a member of your same family and it's a fight over food and you're a raptor like Deinonychus, you don't want to get into a fight and kill your brother or sister or mother. Maybe if it's your little brother you'll consider it, but that's a different story. Um, but you definitely want to send them a message and by by turning and making sure they see your teeth, that's sending a very clear signal that they may have had the ability, or they had the ability to attack you, and it is, man, you need to back off. So yeah, I think it's possible that they may have been able to use their teeth for that. He also wrote, uh, wrote this, he said, he asked, what's your favorite dinosaur book? Mine is Tom Holtz's uh, Dinosaurs. I wanna tell you something. If you want the best dinosaur book in the world, then go online and look for Dr. Tom Holtz, H-O-L-T-Z, Dr. Tom Holtz's book called Dinosaurs. Um, it was illustrated by Lou Ray. This is the most comprehensive book, the best book I've ever seen. In fact, I have an autographed copy because fortunately for me, I, I like to consider Dr. Holtz a friend and I had a chance to work with him on Jurassic Fight Club. This is the best book you can buy, folks. I, I encourage you to get out and find this book. Very up to date. Uh, loaded with all the latest information. Uh, it's a great read, it's a great book. Uh, you definitely want to go out there and get that. Uh, and if you ever meet Dr. Holtz, make sure and take your copy and get him to autograph it for you. He'll probably kill me for suggesting that because now he'll be inundated with autograph requests, but that's life. <laughs> okay, um, uh, Nadav from Tel Aviv, Israel, wrote to me and said, how would you compare the intelligence of a raptor to that of a modern bird? Uh, really good question, Nadav, that's great. And Nadav, again, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I, I assume I am, but if I'm not, uh, I mean no disrespect, and I, I hope, uh, hope you can appreciate. I'm just terrible at, uh, at uh, uh, pronouncing names. So anyway, uh, the way to compare intellect is by getting into their heads. And that is done by people like Dr. Lawrence Whitmer, who is CAT scanning the brains of, uh, of birds and then comparing that to CAT scans of predatory dinosaurs. And I had some good conversations with him about that. And based on the two, it appears that predatory dinosaurs, especially like Troodon, Velociraptor, Deinonychus, it appears like those dinosaurs' brains are pretty darn comparable to modern birds like hawks and owls and eagles. And um, birds are pretty intelligent. All you have to do is sit out in your backyard and watch them, how they, how they interact and how they act. They're pretty intelligent animals. And uh, so I would say that comparatively, the theropod dinosaurs, the predatory dinosaurs, were as advanced as modern day birds uh, and uh, maybe even more so because they lived in an environment that required 
even more brain power to survive because it was a much more violent environment. See, the benefit of being a bird is you can fly away from danger. The worst thing about being a raptor is you can't fly away. Maybe you could. We're finding so many feathered dinosaurs. But um, if you're a velociraptor, that means you're left your wits. So that's why I think maybe they could have even been even a little more advanced. Okay, Adam from San Antonio, Texas, my hometown. Adam says, how do you know where to dig for dinosaurs? I get this question a lot, Adam. Let, let me explain it like this. Think of the layers of the earth like you would pages in a book. So imagine a book laying on its side and you open up the book to page 100. Well, let's say that on page 100, that represents a time when dinosaurs were alive. Well, that means if you want to find their bones, you have to go to the layer in the earth where page 100 is located. And then you can find the bones. In some places, page 100 can be 50 feet underground. You never know dinosaurs are there, even though you're walking over the top of them. In other places, page 100 could be sitting at the surface, like places in Utah and South Dakota and Wyoming and Montana and Canada. There, you're walking on the very layer of dirt that represents the time when dinosaurs were alive. So in order to know where to go look for dinosaurs, you have to know what page they were on or what layer of dirt they're in and then go to those places and begin to look. So here in San Antonio, we're just not going to find a dinosaur laying in our backyard because we're not on the right page. Uh, now we can go down a little bit and there are certainly we find a lot of dinosaur tracks but those tracks were left here at an earlier time and we find most of those in the hill country and rivers where the uplifting of land has exposed that page or layer of dirt or we find them in riverbeds where dirt has washed away uh, the dirt that used to cover them and that's why we see them. So uh, to find dinosaurs we got to know where the place is where the right layer of dirt is exposed and that's where we go and look for them. And finally Callan from San Marcos, California. Uh, Callan wrote and said what was the biggest meat-eating dinosaur and was it in the movie Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs? It Was it the dinosaur named Rudy? Uh, Callan, I didn't see uh, um, Dawn of the Dinosaurs. So unfortunately, I can't tell you who Rudy was. But here is what the thought is about who's the biggest meat eater. When you say the biggest, that's a difficult thing because big can mean long, or big can mean tall, or big can mean heavy. So the longest meat eater we know of is Spinosaurus. He's very long. The tallest meat eater that I know of is Carcara, I mean, I'm sorry, Giganotosaurus or Maposaurus. They were tallest. But the, the, but the strongest, in my opinion, was Tyrannosaurus rex. So it's so hard to say who's the biggest. Let me put it to you this way. If you took Tyrannosaurus rex, Giganotosaurus, Maposaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Sauropheganax, Epantereus, and Spinosaurus, those are among the giant predators. You put them all in a room, you close the door, you're going to hear a terrible noise. There's going to be roaring, screaming, biting, yelling. Somebody's going to be banging on that door asking you to let them out. And then it's going to get quiet. And when you walk into that room, there's going to be one dinosaur left. And that's going to be a very full Tyrannosaurus Rex. In my opinion, he may not be the tallest and he may not be the longest. But in my opinion, he's the biggest and he's certainly the baddest dude that ever walked the late Cretaceous. All right, that's it for today. Um, again, go to the website, dinosaurgeorge.com. While you're there, check out all the different pages. There's some really cool stuff to see. There's some great stuff to learn. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all soon, and uh, thank you so much for writing.